Hello everyone, in today's beginner's guide we'll be taking a look at looting in the game and going over what to typically expect from various building types, zones, or areas. We'll also take a look at the various loot tables for what can be provided from various skill related zones, such as forging at each level, fishing tables by level, and such. Before I begin, I'd like to ask you to check out Kato Phoenix who did the lovely artwork on today's video. Check out her Twitter in the description below. Fill it with birds. I'd also like to thank Chill Homer for the suggestion that is today's topic. Thanks a lot, mate. Now, I appreciate suggestions, as sometimes I have issues thinking of what I should cover next. Now, let's begin the video, shall we? Your suburban homes will typically have a mixture of almost any loot type in the game. Kitchens will usually but not always have food and cooking related items. Kitchens in suburban homes can often have their kitchen spawns however replaced with theme inventories. Matching being say a gardener's home and in this case it'll spawn a bunch of farming related equipment and books. A carpenter's house which will contain a bunch of woodworking and carpentry related materials and books such as axes and hammers and saws. There's a bunch of different themes like these which may or may not show up in any given home. Bookshelves, which are typically found in the living rooms, bedrooms, or home offices, will spawn literature related goods. You'll typically find books, skill books, and magazines, newspapers. To more rare spawns is the comic books or the very uncommon hotties magazine. Search here if your character is suffering from mental related moodles or if you just need to add a skill multiplier or you're looking for one of the skill recipe books. Now bedrooms often spawn various clothing and bag related equipment as well as other random little things which you may typically find in a bedroom. Things like watches and clocks, video games, earbuds, CD players. The big things you usually search for in these rooms however is going to be a clock of some sort to keep track of the time of day as well as extra extra clothing or backpacks, as pretty much any sort of backpack or bag that isn't the military grade ones can spawn in bedrooms, ranging from the teeny tiny lunchbox which sometimes has goodies in it, to the kick ass big hiking bag which can really help keep your inventory issues sorted out. One other thing that often spawns in bedrooms is various weaponry, I'm talking guns, the bats, the musical instruments and more. The next room to keep an eye out for is the bathrooms, these rooms hold all sorts of medical related items as well as small miscellaneous items like soap or toilet paper. You can also find spare sheets that you can use as either bandages or as window coverings to keep the lights out and the zombies from seeing in. Next up is storage closets. Closets in homes oftentimes will have hardware related loot. It can be pretty much any hardware piece ranging from small paper clips and nails all the way up to sledges, saws, and crowbars. This is a good place to search for anyone trying to build up their own base or barricade a pre-existing home. Another caveat to note with suburban homes is they will often have either garages or sheds attached or nearby. These places can be excellent sources of hardware and automotive loot for those looking, as well as generators which almost any player will need at some point in their run if it lasts long enough that is. Outside of these, homes will often have garbage bags, mailboxes, and vehicles. The cans will often spawn trash items, small candies, empty water bottles, and garbage bags which are needed to make grain collector barrels. The mailboxes will spawn random literature items including the various magazines and newspapers. Cars however could spawn with a wide variety of random loot inside them including rarely corpses. Cars themselves however are valuable as they make excellent escape tools as well as mass storage and help to shuttle you and your friends and supplies back and forth from base to looting zone. Keep in mind the key could spawn in the car, in a nearby zombie inventory in the house next to where the car is. I've even found them inside of a corpse I found in the trunk before or sometimes you just won't find a key at all and you'll have to either hotwire the car or strip it for parts to use on another car. I'm not gonna go super in depth with cars right now because I have an entire video
video on those. If you want to see more, check out the maintenance video where I break down cars in depth. Trailer park homes will typically spawn the same loot pools as suburban homes, but in a much smaller house and with less room types in said house for them to spawn. One thing of interest to note within the homes themselves is the kitchens have a high likelihood of spawning minor hardware loot. Things like nails, concrete powder, or hammers and such. In general, you can also find cardboard boxes throughout the homes that contain hardware goods as well. The trailer parks also tend to have areas that have large piles of dumpsters, which can be great sources of garbage bags, small candies, cigarettes, matches, and more. Trailer parks will also often have barbecues, either the big propane ones or the smaller charcoal ones, which can be valuable for late game cooking without power or heat. The next thing of interest within trailer parks, however, is the maintenance sheds, which typically spawn with hardware equipment and radio gear, ranging from small walkie talkies all the way to the chunky ass US Army ham radio. And no, you cannot eat the radio. Trailer parks otherwise have less notable interesting areas or pieces of loot themselves, and often make for less than ideal areas to loot or live. Though there's often roughed up cars that'll spawn here, as well as various picnic tables that can be broken down for carpentry XP. Homes are also less valuable to loot as they only often have mini fridges which are built into kitchen counters rather than full fridges, which really cuts their storage capacity down for fresh and frozen food. Though mini fridges often weigh a lot less, it can be picked up and taken off easier if they aren't built into the counter. They are good for taking to a place that has no food storage capacity like a warehouse or a storage center however. Restaurants are where you want to go if you want to gorge yourself, or if you're running low on both perishable and non-perishable goods, such as kitchen items, roasting pans, cooking pots, frying pans, griddles, and more. Places like your local Spiffo Burger tend to be high priority loot zones if you can manage to get into them, especially early, as they can hold days or even weeks worth of fresh, frozen, non-perishable meals. Now keep in mind that smaller places will obviously not be as lucrative as the bigger places you can find. But as a general rule of thumb, they are excellent places to find food. You can also find some minor stores of weirdly enough seeds and random hardware loot as well. Restaurants will often have storage cubbies that have hardware equipment and bathrooms which spawn your typical bathroom loot, medical equipment and all that. And they often have trash cans which can be raided for more supplies. Also keep in mind that food joints are themed. Spiffos you'll often find things like fried chicken, fries, burgers, stuff like that. While a bacon Bakery is going to have breads, cakes, pies, waffles, you know, dessert and baked goods sort of things. So keep that in mind while you're ransacking the place like Sly Cooper searching for coins. Now, storage centers will usually have a large variety of loot to them, as they are rented out storage units that anyone can put pretty much anything they want into. So what you get really depends on whatever room you crack open. Storage centers also vary from one door where you have to break down to get access to all the rooms, this being a heavy locked door to a bunch of warehouse shutter doors, which all need to either be unlocked or broken down to access the goodies within. Now, as I said, what you get is entirely random. Them. One room may have a bunch of clothing, another may be packed to the gills with hardware equipment. You might find a bunch of home furniture within the next one. Overall though, storage centers remain valuable sources of a wide variety of equipment, and due to often being surrounded by high fences, they can make easily securable bases as well. Bring your sledgehammer if you plan to loot one of these, and either break through the wall, or break down the doors as most of them can't be opened or unlocked. Otherwise, start crushing the doors with a weapon such as an axe, which is effective at breaking them down. Stores will vary greatly, as every store is themed, and as there's far too many, I'm not gonna list off every single store and cover them. But in general, say bookstores are a great source of literature, grocery stores are excellent sources of food resources of all types, 
Hardware stores sell all sorts of hardware equipment ranging from tiny hand axes and padlocks all the way up to sledgehammers, wood axes, and fire axes. Clothing stores are filled with tons and tons of clothing items ranging from summer clothes to winter clothes to general all year round outfits. The nice thing about stores is the fact they always have a sign above them that gives you a general idea of what you'll find in them. Within West Point and Rosewood, there's also a caveat. Many of the stores encounter in the downtown parts of town have a second floor apartment on top of them. These can be excellent places to loot for the extra pile of random home goods, as they contain many of the same loot zones as the suburban homes. Gas stations are one of the most important loot zones out there, as they are typically fantastic sources of preserved food, car equipment like rinses, jacks, and battery chargers, gas cans, and most importantly, gasoline itself. You'll need gasoline if you want to keep your home and car powered into the late game, and keep the gas station itself powered as well because a gas station's unlimited source of fuel. It'll keep your fridges, your freezers, and your oven running, and your home warm and cozy. You can also find some literature located in these places such as magazines, newspapers, and most importantly, maps, which can be nice to mark off where you been in town and what you've hit. Another nice thing often found in gas stations is hardware equipment and weaponry. You could find things like screwdrivers and behind the counters there's often spawns of shotguns and baseball bats, likely used by the store owner against any young thug who thinks he could take whatever the hell he wants. Well swing batter batter bitch. Warehouses are fantastic halls of hardware loot. You'll find tons of equipment here that'll be very valuable to your survival journey. From nails, wood, hammers, saw, buckets, concrete, plasters, sledges, axes, pipes of all varieties, metal bars, survival ovens, and if you feel like robbing the break room, you can even take the kitchen sink too. Another thing found here often is farming equipment. You'll very often find seeds, gardening spray cans, trowels, watering cans, and more. Overall, you'll find plenty of choice equipment here that'll keep you alive and thriving. Warehouses often have an employee break room, which can have kitchen areas, fridges, vending machines, and more if you're lucky. The one to the northern edge of Muldrow has a couch in it, as well as some of the McCoy buildings, which can be used to get a decent rest in. Warehouses also serve as excellent bases due to the large amount of storage capacity they come with already, as well as being large and having multiple floors. Auto shops are quite rare in Zomboid. There isn't a whole lot of them and they're quite scattered around the map. But like their name implies, they are places where cars are repaired. This means they are fantastic sources of car parts and hardware equipment. Namely, the tools that will be needed to apply these car parts. These parts can be quite hard to find in good condition. So these shops, or the rail yard located to the east of Moldraw, should be prime candidates for raiding if you need the parts. And broken down wrecks on the road just ain't doing it for you anymore. These places also tend to have vending machines, which can serve as a quick source of snack, and a water fountain when you need a sip to satiate that thirst. Schools have a wide variety of loot in them, though this definitely varies based on size. On average, schools have a good sized to large kitchen, which will contain a surplus of food, cooking equipment if you're lucky, booze. Next is the gyms. Gyms can hold lighter sports clothing and sports related melee weapons and armor. You've got your bats, your hockey sticks, your hockey helmets, your tennis rackets and such. Next is the libraries. Be sure to hit these up if you're short on literature of all sorts, as they may just have that one book you're really looking for. Teacher's lounges come with a large mix of random shit. Food and drink in fridges or mini fridges, to random office shit like notebooks, loose leaves, pieces of paper, writing implements and such. Maintenance closets can hold quality supplies of hardware loot, which tend to be pretty useful. Classrooms could spawn minor office shit in desk. The cabinets could spawn home kitchen loot, and the metal cabinets can hold hardware loot, which is nice. The school offices hold pretty much the same shit that teachers' break rooms can, but in smaller amounts. And the lockers located throughout the school can hold a very large variety of stuff. But on the higher end, you've got melee options such as bats, 
good quality backpacks, including hiking bags, school bags, and duffel bags, to lunch boxes, which will oftentimes have a meal in them. There's also tons of miscellaneous or straight up junk items like earbuds or footballs or erasers, stuff you typically find in a school, but serves little purpose in the zombie apocalypse. Either way, you just got schooled. If you're strapped for weaponry and think you defeat the zombies guarding it, a police station could be a good shot. Hit the armory and the zombies will have a blast. You'll be gunning for them in no time, ready to send them straight to shell with one squeeze of the trigger. Other loot includes snacks in the various break rooms and miscellaneous office supplies. If the particular station has a locker room, you'll be able to find various sports related items. Minor weapons, duffel bags, sports clothing, and random junk items like footballs. Well, you gotta give the zombies a sporting chance somehow. The biggest disappointment is the fact that because there is no donuts in game, which means you can't steal the cops' donuts. That just about polices up the station. So let's move on to the fire station and see if they have anything better to steal. Maybe they'll give it to me if I axe nicely. Now we can really get fired up. Fire stations tend to come with moderate supplies of hardware loot, which most importantly could come in the form of the almighty axe. A long time mainstay of a weapon for a reason. Solid damage with reliable multi hits for when you need to axe the hard questions. The locker rooms can spawn the same sorts of loot that we discussed for police stations, and if the place has a medical room, well you can really luck out and build a damn nice horde of medical supplies. Another nice boost is the fact that some fire stations tend to have nice living areas, bedrooms, really nice kitchens, break rooms, and another useful thing is the parking lot will often spawn emergency fire vehicles, which can have either more medical supplies or axes or weaponry similar, as well as the usual car loot spawns. Don't bother with hanging that do not disturb sign. Housekeeping's gonna come in anyways and assist you in dying soon. Hotels could vary wildly depending on size and quality. A smaller hotel may only come with one or two containers to search per room, and at most will be a source of fresh water, while a bigger hotel may come with a wider variety of loot per suite. You'll pretty much always find bath towels, sheets, and pillows no matter which hotel you go to, but fancier hotels can also provide plenty of backpacks, medical supplies, miscellaneous junk items, and even firearms if you get very lucky. Be sure to also check the front lobby, and if it's a smaller hotel, they tend to have an office suite, which basically consists of a front lobby and an attached apartment for the manager of the hotel. They also often have attached kitchens or very close restaurants, which not only serve as excellent sources of food and cooking equipment, but also booze. Cause who doesn't want to drink away a bad day? Especially when said bad day involves watching your neighbors get eaten, and then getting back up to eat you. This is a must for many players early or late game. You'll come to rely upon this for a variety of needs, from food, medicine, tools, and bait. This will be a very valuable resource. Also keep in mind that some resources can only be found after you've read the Herbalist magazine, or you have the right level requirement to find them. At level zero, you could find three different kinds of berries out of eight total, and one of those eight will be poisonous. You cannot identify which berry is poisonous until you've read the herbalist, or you taste test and hopefully survive. Next, at this level, you can find chip stones, regular stones, tree branches, and twigs. At level 2 foraging, you'll be able to find black or blue berries, and these will never be poisonous. You can also find worms, which are a bait item, and the other three berries that you could find. Next up to bat at level 4 is mushrooms. You can find five different types of mushrooms at this level, which serve as an excellent food item on its own or as an ingredient in a cooked dish. But be wary, for one of them is poisonous, much like with the berries. You can also find crickets, which are a bait item and a food item, but it will cause you depression to eat. At level 6, you unlock another two mushrooms you could find, as well as the grasshopper and cricket, which make for excellent bait and saddening food. And finally, you can now forage logs. At level 7, you can now forage for frogs. This is an animal that can be butchered for its flesh and tossed in the meals. The nice thing about the frog is it won't rot until it's butchered for its meat, 
so I guess you could keep it as a pet. At level 8, you unlock the final non-herbalist item, that being the wild eggs. This is a food item that has to be cooked. Now the final items are only unlocked once you've read the Herbalist magazine, but once done, the following can be done at any level. You could find Black Sage, Comfrey, Plantain, Wild Garlic, Common Mallow, Ginseng, and Lemongrass. All of these offer a variety of medicinal benefits to the player, and there also exists a variety of food items only discoverable once you have Herbalist. Violets at level 0, Grape Leaves at level 2, and Rose Hips are found at level 4. These are all food Food items which will never rot and therefore make for a nice emergency stash. As far as I can tell from personal experience, you can catch all the different fish at any level. These are the bass, the catfish, the crappie, the perch, the pike, the sunfish, and the trout. The biggest thing I believe is your chance of catching a larger fish is affected by your level, as fish can be one of three sizes, a small, medium, or large, which varies on a sliding scale. There's a whole mathematical equation that estimates just how much hunger each fish will provide. But basically, the higher the level, the more likely you are to catch a big fish. The bigger the fish, the more food that fish will provide. Fishing with live baits more likely to catch items, with the caveat that they are consumed every time you catch something. Fishing tackle requires a higher level to catch things more reliably, but they are rarely consumed by the fish when you do catch something. The final fish you can catch fishing is bait fish. These little fish are caught using a fishing net trap. While they can be eaten, they aren't worth a whole lot of hunger. Really, these are best used as bait. When used as such, the only fish they can catch is pike. But pike are the biggest fish you can catch in the game, so they can feed you very well. The last thing that can be caught while fishing is junk items. Sometimes you can just get unlucky and fish up some drowned camper's socks or shoes. I mean, sucks for them, but hey, if you destroyed your socks and shoes, could be a lucky day. If you're like Amphibian's worm man who just destroyed his shoes walking through the woods. Now this one's always been one of the biggest pains in the ass to me. Trapping can really suck trying to get it to work. Unless you're looking for Astolfo or Felix, I guess, then it's alright. But back to the point, you'll likely find trapping to be a pain in the ass. Now to trap, you'll need one of six tools. Each one will determine what you catch, and once you've got these tools, you've got to choose what environment you're going to be hunting in. The tools are on the screen. You have one of six different zones, these being the farm, the trailer park, the town, vegetation, forest, and deep forest. Each animal has zones that's more or less likely to be found in, with some not being found at all in a given zone. Another fact you have to take into account is time of day. Certain animals can only be caught during the different hours of the day. Birds, rats, and mice are able to be found all hours of day, while rabbits and squirrels are nocturnal, only being able to be caught after 1900 up to 0500. One other thing to keep in mind is all traps need bait or else they pretty much won't catch anything. Bait also affects what you're going to catch, if you catch something at all, and they don't just eat your bait. As it would take me forever, I'm just going to show on screen images of what bait is best for what animals, as well as the region where they are most likely to be found at. Hopefully that'll be enough to help you out. A tip for catching animals to be sure to place the cages outside of your maximum view range, as well as be sure to check the trap fairly often so they don't get away and break your cage in the process. I think that just about covers most aspects of looting. If I missed anything, or if you have any questions about specific areas or zones, then please feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Be sure to check the artist's other work in the description, and hey, if you enjoy my mod guides or beginner guides, be sure to check out some of my video game reviews. I think you might like them, one of which will be on the screen around now. This has been Core, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.